I'm Juliette Sali. In this week's edition of IG Macro Intelligence, we take a look at the visit to China by Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and its impact on markets. Mr Albanese says he's confident the visit has sealed diplomatic ties with China, which have been strained since 2020 when China imposed trade blocks that cost over $20 billion a year in commodity and food exports. The Prime Minister has also left open the possibility of Australia backing China's bid to join a trans-Pacific trade bloc. In 2020, China imposed trade blocks that cost Australia over $20 billion a year in commodity and food exports. It was a bid to show economic coercion, but it didn't fully work. Farmers and miners found other markets for the goods that China blocked. Most of the sanctions have now been removed, but there are remaining restrictions on wine, lobster and beef exports, which the Prime Minister is confident will be lifted soon. An easing of tariffs would further boost exports. Cynthia, Cynthia Darren, who used to work for the Department of Foreign Affairs and trade, told Ausbiz the symbolic lowering of tariffs on Australia's exports signifies that trade relationships seem to be realigning. And latest data from Chinese customs shows that China's October imports from Australia grew 12 per cent from a year earlier to $11.96 billion. China's reliance on Australian iron ore is also positive for our economic outlook. A recent surge in iron ore prices shows no signs of slowing down as China shores up government support for its beleaguered property sector. China consumes more iron ore than any other nation in the world, with close to 70 per cent of the commodity coming from Australia. Treasury Wine Estate stands to benefit from the expected easing of wine tariffs. Several brokers remain positive on this stock. Analysts at Morgan Stanley recently retaining their overweight call with a $14.50 price target. This is also a reflection of the wine giant's acquisition of a California-based luxury wine brand. An expedited review of duties on Australian wine tariffs by Beijing is expected to take several more months. An A2 milk could also benefit. It produces and sells A1 protein-free milk and related products like infant formula, popular with Chinese buyers. Strained ties between Australia and China meant we saw fewer Chinese tourists once borders opened after COVID-19. Before the pandemic, China was Australia's leading visitor market. We welcomed 1.4 million visitors from China in 2019, which contributed $12.4 billion in tourism revenue, according to the ABS. Chinese tourists are slowly returning but remain well below pandemic highs. Tourism Australia estimates visitor numbers from China are approximately 50% of pre-pandemic levels yearly. In April this year, ABS data showed visitation from China to Australia returned to 33% of 2019 levels, up 22% from March. ABS data show the number of short-term trips to Australia in August this year was 23.5% lower than the pre-COVID level in August 2019. New Zealand, the largest source of visitors, accounting for 17% of all arrivals. China didn't even make the top five countries, whereas 10 years ago it dominated. Prime Minister Albanese is on a mission to ensure Chinese, Chinese tourists return down under to come and say g'day, an important step towards strengthening ties between the two nations and a much hoped for boost to our economy. Well, that does it for your IG macro intelligence for this week. We'll see you next week.